welcome back to United News. I'm Angie with United Way of Hernando County, and today I have with me a very special guest and personal friend of mine, uh, healthcare advocate as well as author, Mr. Gary LeBlanc. Gary, thanks for joining us. Great to be here. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Uh, what viewers may not know is that we've actually been friends and community partners now for about eight years. Yeah. Eight years. And we focus together around a very special health initiative, our uh, annual dementia care seminar, which is coming up this year on January 24th, 2019. So uh, Gary, let's tell viewers a little bit more about what they can anticipate during this event. Uh, this is specifically geared towards caregivers. Correct? All right. But we're also going to cover all the dementia related diseases, the Lewy body, front upper lobe, vascular, traumatic brain injury. We bring all that into play and then we get into involved into how to care. Uh, behaviors, communication. So it's, it's going to be a great seminar. Anybody that's, you're going to walk out with a lot, a lot of knowledge that you might not have had when you came in. So no question. So I'm glad that you say that. So there is indeed a difference between dementia and Alzheimer's. Can you explain a little bit more about that? Unfortunately, we even have too many of our healthcare professionals putting these in the same category. Well, Alzheimer's is a disease. But the word dementia is basically an umbrella term for multiple symptoms. So it's the Alzheimer's disease that's going to create the symptoms of dementia. If you've got Parkinson's disease dementia, it's the Parkinson's coming in creating the symptoms of dementia. Okay. And then when I'm speaking on this, I've got to paraphrase this stuff a little bit on it, but there's a professor from Boston University who says, you got to consider the word dementia like the word flu. And all he means by that is if you go to the doctor and the doc doctor tells you you have the flu, he's only telling you you have flu-like symptoms. So we have to figure out, if somebody has dementia, and I don't care what age they are, whether you're 45 years old or you're 95 years old, there's something in your body causing it. And if we figure that out, we'll get better at diagnosing. So clearly you know a lot. Um, can you share just a little bit more about your knowledge in this field, like how it came about, where your passion stems from? Well, I'm the director of uh, education for the Dementia Spotlight Foundation, but I've been training publicly and professionally for 10 years through the health field, hospitals, police departments. I mean, Hernando County Sheriff's Department, I've been doing them for four years now on it. Uh, but all, most of my experience, and if you call it in the trenches of what you want, but 22 year run in my family. Um, 22 years now on it. So it's 20 years, 12 with dad, he died of Alzheimer's. My mother lived eight years with vascular dementia and my sister now has been diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's at the age of 65. So, wow. so we got another run of this on it. Uh, we thought it was over, but you, know, you get dealt the cards, you got to go. And We're pretty experienced now. We'll be all right. I was going to say, you kind of know your stuff. So um, with this being our eighth, eighth coming uh, dementia care seminar, I have sat through every single one of, of Gary's presentations that we've done here in Hernando County. And I'll tell you, every year I walk out with something new something that I didn't know the year before. I just feel like the best part about having you in this role, Gary, is that you make everything so relatable because of your, you said 12 years, being the sole caregiver for your father. Dad, eight with mom, right. So I, when I do my presentations, and I'm, it doesn't matter where I'm speaking at, whether I'm with a bunch of doctors or with a bunch of caregivers, I always try to put myself on the caregiver level right. because that's where the understanding needs to be on this. As the families are the ones that are struggling. I mean, they're, and it's just education. We've got to bring the knowledge out for them. Right. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. So what can you maybe tell, um, or do you have, like, uh, a tip if, if you could share something right now with a caregiver who's possibly struggling or, you know, they're, they're going day to day out there? What's one thing that you at least want them to know before they come to the January 24th seminar? Let's go with two things. What we really want to concentrate on is controlling their anxiety, bringing their anxiety levels down, because they're all going to go through bouts of anxiety, people living with dementia. I mean, why I'm in this room? What, what was I looking for? What is that person's name all day long? Of course, they're going to go through bouts of anxiety. And the other one is depression. We have to keep an eye on them. We keep an eye on those two things and keep those, those two levels low, you will see a whole new patient out of this person. So this, we're going to talk during the seminar, what we're going to be doing, we'll discuss different ways to keep all this, what signs of anxiety to look for, how to keep those anxieties down without over-medicating them. I'm very strong on we got to, uh, I've just ran into a situation just recently that was, it still makes my skin crawl. Uh, they basically had this woman in a coma just for medications on it. And she just didn't have to be. She, we moved her out of one building, we put her in another one, she is a whole, she's laughing, she's, I mean, it's amazing. Uh, but somebody has to answer some questions of what happened to this woman, and we're, we're working on that now. 
Well, and that's why I label you as an advocate as well. You're not just th this amazing author and caregiver, like you are an advocate because you're out there raising awareness. For a, a lot of times people or caregivers, they just simply give up hope or they think that they're in it alone, which brings me to the next thing because I know that you're, you do such a huge push on not just the health for the individual suffering from this illness, but also the, the caregiver's health itself. Yeah, if the, once the caregiver falls apart, it all falls apart. Uh, so we're, we're, we're working on the Alzheimer's Music Fest coming up in March 9th. This is our first year we're doing one in Tampa. Uh, all the money we're raising is going to respite care because we want to give these families a break. Right. So uh, March 9th, Skipper Smokehouse. I just got it in. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Use this opportunity. Driving and crying, main band. <laughs> Use this opportunity. So um, maybe for somebody who's not aware of respite. Respite is basically a break. I mean, we're going to have home care come in and give you maybe 48-hour break, or even if it's even if it's five hours, you can at least go back and lay down and get some sleep, or you can go do your shopping and not worry about your loved one because caregiving is 24/7. Right. I mean, and, and if you're the primary caregiver for this person, you're the one person there, and then the, then you almost feel guilty about leaving him at one point, you know, or leaving with somebody else. So we got to get the education and all this stuff out early. What I did with my dad, I made the biggest mistake was I was a self overprotector. By the time I realized how much I needed to go reach out for help, I couldn't even take a breath. Yeah. And that's what we're trying to do. We're going to try to, these diseases, and I can't just put dementia in front of it, it doesn't matter if it's cancer or whatever it is, nobody wants to learn about them until it falls in your lap. And sometimes that's a little too late. So. so even if you don't have dementia, you should come to our seminar and learn because you never know what's going to happen in the future. No, I mean, we were just talking about that, that so many times people, they, they, it's not on their radar because it's not directly impacting them. But even if you are a waitress and you have somebody come into your place of employment, like building up your knowledge based on how to better act or react or interact with, it's uh, not contagious. <laughs> right? That's good. That should be our subject right. for this. It's not contagious. Right. Well, with that being said, I know that I know that at our last dementia care seminar at the end, we had about 30, 40 plus people, and uh, you asked that that one question: How many in the room are currently a part of a support group? And probably about two of them raised their hand. So the importance of that too, knowing your local resources, knowing that there are agencies and support services that are out there for caregivers and their loved ones. And local, like you just said on it, right? That's best thing about the support groups is you're gonna find, you're gonna be on a group of people that's either going through it or already have gone all the way through it. Some of these caregivers are still going back to support groups to, to help the other people that are just getting into this on it. And they truly have all the information you need. Way more than you're gonna get out of the doctor's office, I'm sorry. Well, and that's why you're, you're so good at what you do, no, you. because you were there firsthand. Guys, you're going to want to mark your calendar uh, for January 24th, 2019, from 9.30 to noon. This is going to be held at uh, St. Francis Cabrini Church at Xavier Hall. We are taking RSVPs uh, simply because we want to feed you that morning, so please make sure you call the United Way office at 352-688-2026. Gary, I am so lucky to have you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming out. It's going to be a good one. Thank you all so much for checking out United News again. And as always, thank, thank you, you for living, living United. United.